Uh, I'm really enthusiastic about having been invited here uh, by Dr. Bryson. So I've been quite inspired by her research and insights regarding technology and identity. And uh, I'd like to also thank, uh, again, the Center for Cross-Faculty uh, Inquiry and Education uh, and, and the co-sponsor Center for Culture, Identity, and Education and Digital Lit Literacy Center and, and, and all of the others that, that Dr. Bryson mentioned. So today I'll be talking about uh, phantasms and uh, shapeshifters. So in my research, I develop computing technologies to uh, enable new forms of stories and new types of uh, identity. So the stories we tell uh, and our identities are now distributed amongst our mobile devices, mapped onto characters in popular computer games, and integrated with other users in online communication and networking. Yet, despite these interesting advances, there are strong limitations of our current technologies uh, for users to tell their stories, to represent their identities and personal experiences, emotions, or imagine new identities via rich fictions as characters in game worlds or, or virtual worlds. Now, of course, the boundaries, limitations, social structures, imaginative nature of violence, uh, fear, fluidity of identity has long been explored uh, in a sophisticated manner within the arts. So uh, Yasumasa Morimura, here we see his self-portrait after Marilyn uh, Monroe, casts him as a global icon, but it can't obliterate his own uh, identity markers. A Japanese male op operating uh, w within kind of luxury art market, raising questions about his own role uh, in the art or mass media worlds. Or we also have here Adrian Piper's uh, mythic being, where sh she creates uh, uh, what she calls this uh, African-American male persona, a kind of mythic being that which embodies everything you most hate and fear, and put these uh, uh, hand-manipulated photographs within, say, New York Times uh, articles, so kind of distributed identity in uh, 1975 classified advertising section. More recently, uh, artists such as uh, Micah Cardenas have been constructing alternate identities. So this is a 365-hour durational performance in, in Second Life called Becoming Dragon, where it a, was a kind of parable for a transgender experience, but also the idea of indeterminate identity uh, more, much more generally. So uh, she encountered new forms of interspecies companionship, but also prejudice. So for example, being told no dragons allowed in a cyberpunk zone. So it was a kind of new manifestation of the kind of work that uh, Maury Mora or Cindy Sherman or, or uh, Adrian Piper uh, do. And yet I'm not interested uh, only in the, these uh, kind of artworks, which are largely performative, but also the way in which technology itself structures and allows or disallows different aspects of our identities. Uh, because in building new technologies, I find that there are a set of common limitations that disempower users in each of these realms. And I won't go over uh, all of them, but just for example, in computer games, we have our identity reduced just to numerical statistics. Our social categories are reduced to graphical models or skins overlaid atop those models. Your character's change is driven uh, by combat, spatial exploration, and object acquisition in a lot of popular games. In social networking, we have uh, predefined user categories. When you enter, uh, you can enter your information into fields, but you can't change the fields uh, themselves. Identity is only defined by an individual uh, herself. It's not defined by uh, uh, a community. And uh, our identities become, become largely informational rather than imaginative. In virtual worlds, constructing, say, educational or cultural systems, uh, we have affect and emotion largely ignored in our, uh, in our uh, representational models. We have a limited diversity, uh, diversity of cultural models, for example, implemented within, within the games. Uh, and so we have this range of different kind of limitations of the rigid structures of computation for representing the nuance of real life identity. Right? In real life identity, we have uh, nonverbal communication, we have gesture, we have fashion, we have all of these kind of analog or cont uh, continuous ways to construct ourselves. And what I believe is that we can develop much more robust, dynamic, contextually sensitive technologies in, in order to allow users to represent themselves imaginatively yet also in order to uh, help to agitate and fight against some of the kind of stigma which is built into our computational infrastructures. 
So my research group at Georgia Tech has developed a number of systems, which I'll describe a bit more in depth later. But for example, uh, Chameleonia. So this is a detail from uh, Chameleonia. It's a game of shifting identity where construction of the self is at stake. So you make gestures associated with commerce, uh, ideology, aggression, and more. And your new avatar configurations change according to the meaningful content of what you do, not just, say, uh, object acquisition. All right, Define Me is a social networking applique we've uh, application we've developed. So this is actually uh, online on uh, uh, Facebook. And so users define metaphorical profiles and avatars, uh, not for themselves, but for each other. So you can uh, uh, go and label your friend, and this kind of chimera-like chimera avatar will be generated automatically by the system according to what your friends communally define you as. Uh, or. Lost Under Sea, which is an interactive narrative system that I built using an underlying uh, uh, artificial intelligence system in which a character moving through a standard work day uh, starts submerging within the depths of the ocean. So it's a kind of parable for weight and pressure of everyday life. But the interesting thing here is that your character's configuration changes based on uh, the emotional tone of actions chosen by the user, not based on something like a, a combat or moving through space. And so what I'll do today is give an overview of our current research and future directions, and in particular using this uh, uh, metaphor and construct of phantasmal media to describe our practice. Uh, so the Imagination, Computation, and Expression Lab Studio is the group I, I direct. So we have about 10 members now uh, uh, within the group, PhD students, master students, and, and undergrads. Uh, and just a couple of undergraduate researchers. And what we do is a practice which I call uh, imagination computing. And imagination computing represents a different kind of uh, perspective on, on computation. So you know, my PhD work is in computer science and cognitive science, yet I often find that my aims differ from what uh, a lot of the hallmarks of the field's uh, emphases typically are. Uh, in short, that I'm interested in subjectivity, culture, and uh, criticality, and how computational structures can enable uh, the three of these. So subjective computing refers to endeavors that use computational technologies to serve expressive goals. So these could be interpretive goals, goals driven by ambiguity, driven by improvisation, and they're quite different than uh, usability or productivity-oriented goals, such as you might find in, say, the Department of uh, Human-Computer Interaction. Uh, cultural uh, computing is this idea that we engage practices which are typically not privileged uh, with, within, uh, let's say, the computational uh, uh, f framework of many departments. And we believe that computational uh, uh, innovation uh, grounded in culture can actually spawn uh, new forms of expressive practices. So that's not this idea that we can go out and find alternate, alternate cultural forms and exploit that for computing, but that computing can actually be grounded in a diversity of uh, epistemologies. It's this idea that cultural practices are built implicitly into all computational uh, systems. Uh, so for example, the von Neumann machine, which is in every computer uh, ar architecture, you have uh, 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 programs and, and uh, built-in memory. Well, when von Neumann first talked about the von, no the von Neumann uh, machine, it was discussed in the sense